Seems like every time I do something nowadays, everybody says, hey, do you need a hand with that? And I'm like, ha, ah, you know, it was funny for the first two months, but now I'm like, all right, come up with something new, folks. I mean, like when I first came home from the doctor, I was kind of confused. It's like, I felt like something was missing, but I just couldn't put my finger on it, you know? <laughs> I don't know. There are some benefits to not having as many fingers. Like when I go get my nails done at the salon, I get 40% off every time. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back for episode 14 of Building a House Start to Finish. Yeah, Captain Morgan up there, what are you doing? Well, I'm waiting on my cut guy. This week, we're going to finish the porch ceilings, prep for floating shelves in the kitchen, and also take some venting details up a notch in quality. And stick with us, guys. We are so close to the inside finish of this project. All right, this tongue and groove ceiling is next, but before we do that, we're gonna make sure that this outside rafter bottom is actually straight. And right now it's really bowed that way. So we're gonna put a rat run in that'll tie the bottoms all together, straighten this, and then we'll put the tongue and groove on the bottom. So this type of bracing, commonly called a rat run, was not required by our engineer drawing for these trusses, but it can always be added to stiffen and straighten the bottom of the trusses. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Just take a saw and chop that two inches off. Once we had the bracing up in the webbing of these trusses, we simply fastened it to the bottom cord and we were able to sight down the end truss and make sure that it was straight before fastening it to that truss. And with not a second to spare, Jamie pulled up with the tongue and groove that would be the finished material for the ceiling. What's cracking? Woo! <laughs> Let's see if he notices there's a mistake. Can you pick it out? Well, it's all beautiful. There's a mistake. You shouldn't have said that. You tried to say that. There's probably not one. Here's something we do about every week. We haul all of our own scrap to the dump on our own homemade dump trailer. And Jamie really enjoys doing this. He's the trash man. This is kind of like a, uh, it looks like a giant uh, granny shower cap is what this thing looks like, doesn't it? Yeah, we don't want to pollute. Is that, do you have, do you have proof? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Actually, I just don't want to get pulled over because if something flies out of here and somebody sees it, I will be in big trouble. Time for some tongue and grooving. <laughs> I see a lot of beard. A jigsaw is a great tool to have if you're gonna do tongue and groove because you almost always have to cut around can housings or fan boxes on ceilings. And if your cuts are sloppy and loose, the trims may not cover the gap. We fasten this material with 15 gauge finish nails through the tongue so the fasteners are hidden. And a great trick if you need to pry these boards tight is to use a chisel like a pry bar. You can pull on it while someone else nails it and you keep your rows tight and straight. We sped up the footage here, but if you're wondering, this whole process took about one hour. This is a one by eight pine tongue and groove and it's finished with an exterior deck stain. Notice Ray's drinking diet, diet ginger ale because he's diabetic. And yesterday, <laughs> his wife gave him a bunch of full of sugar Gatorades. <laughs> he was sucking them down all day before oh, he realized God. it. And uh, then he realized, it. <coughs> I think she's trying to take you out. I know. <laughs> Sad. Sad. Thanks, babe. What did she have to say about that? I mean, she tried to apologize, but yeah. Well, let me tell you this much. I've been married like 10 years and my wife doesn't ever pack any drinks for me. So mm. you can count that as good. Yeah. Except she tried to kill you with the drinks. Yep. <laughs> How you like that paintbrush? Oh man, I had better for sure. <laughs> it did cost a dollar. Yeah. But if you, can, if you can cut in with this, you can cut in with anything. That's right. Real reason I'm using this is because Jamie took all the paintbrushes home to clean them. And I showed up before him. So. And I did. Yeah. Wow, I can't <laughs> believe it. I showed up before somebody. That is crazy. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. As I mentioned before, we do all of our own painting. This is the second coat of solid color stain going on in place. And this had some challenging spots to cut in, like right here with this tiny brush. We protected the stonework below from drips with these plywood strips from the scrap pile. Where's Jason at today? 
Ah, uh, he's taking a day, you know. I wonder what he's doing. There's no telling, man. No telling. I bet he's just sitting in his boat in his driveway <laughs> with his shirt off and a Bud Light. <laughs> probably. That's all he needs to be entertained is just a boat. It doesn't even matter if it's in the water. He's probably ordering stuff on Amazon for it. He gets like <laughs> 20 Amazon packages a day. He does. You're right. Man, he gets more stuff than my wife in the mail. It's impressive. Okay, this house has floating shelves instead of upper cabinets. That's right, zero upper cabinets. Well, maybe there'll be one over the fridge. But anyway, hey, we're using these floating shelf brackets that we made at the shop. These I've just been practicing my stick welding uh, to fab these together. This is some quarter inch thick by two inch plate. This is a 5 8 diameter solid rod. That makes a very sturdy shelf. Now check this out. We're still in the framing stage of this project, so we have access to the inside of the wall studs. That's a fantastic place for me to be able to screw this bracket to the side of a wall stud. I think probably most of them mount to the face of a stud, but this is like way easy right now for us. I am also gonna apply a heavy layer of construction adhesive to the backside of this plate so that I know it's not going anywhere. In addition to that, I'm gonna bump this to the plywood surface so that it gives it additional support against being pulled down. All right, so let me tell you about the fasteners we're using. These are inch and three quarter long deck screws. If I used a regular deck screw, ooh, look, ooh, bad news, folks. Yeah. So this is perfect. Now, I've got a corner shelf here, and you get in some of these like impossible situations in a corner because how can you put one shelf on and then put the other one in if you had another bracket sticking out in your way? You can't do it. So. This shelf is gonna have two brackets here. It's gonna run all the way to the wall. After this one is in place and it goes all the way to the corner, this one will have one hole drilled in it. I will slide it in and then fasten it with some pocket screws from the bottom. One of a kind of a pet peeve thing of mine is when these four gain switch boxes are out of level. And it's kind of easy for that to happen because they're so long right here. So we can't put a screw like through this thing into a piece of wood, but you can put a piece of wood like on top to force it down level. So we go around and check these things and uh, this one is out. We're gonna fix it right now. That's it. I put on a brand new clean white shirt because of what you said to me. The other really? Day. You did? It's brand new. Is it the same material? No, it's different. That's why oh, I don't wear it. Because that one's it, like cotton. It may get too hot. That's what I'm worried about, but I'm gonna try it since you you know, busting my chops about my yeah. dirty shirt. It is cleaner. Yeah. But it I mean, is for cotton. Now, for the next five minutes, it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're painting this side of the house, and <laughs> we got a situation here. Nothing bad to the heat and air guys, but this vent right here comes out, like, between two pieces of siding. That doesn't work or look very good, so we're going to cut a block that's flat for that to go on. And I just don't know if they had another one of those, but this type of vent is really meant for a soffit. And I'm not really sure that it's waterproof, so we went and picked up another one like this to replace that, and we're gonna cut a block for it as well. So I got my four and one eighth inch uh, hole saw chucked up here, ready to go. Made sure I got some stick out right there on the pilot bit, because if not, this thing will run around and cut your fingers off. Anyway, I've got... <laughs> It could. Yeah. I've got two blocks here side by side. Uh, the smart thing to do, I think anyway, is to go ahead and drill the holes before you cut them off. That way you've got a nice large piece of material that's not gonna run around on you, okay? Mm-hmm, pilot. When the hole saw is cutting, the little teeth in there, they get plugged up with material. And you know, you might think I just suck at drilling, but actually I'm bobbing the drill up and down on purpose because it allows that material to clear out of the teeth and to be ready to cut new material every time I go up and down. So if you just shove this thing in the hole and just hold the trigger down, you're gonna see a couple things. You're gonna see smoke and uh, black sawdust coming out, maybe fire, it might explode, I don't know. But this is how I do it and it works pretty nice. Okay, I've drilled about three quarters of the way through the thickness of this material. Now I can see that my pilot hole has gone all the way through. I can see out the bottom of the board. I'm gonna stop right here and go ahead and flip the board and drill from the other side. That way I, uh, well, two things. One thing is it makes the piece really easy to get out of the drill. 
okay? This is not gonna be stuck in the drill. That's one thing, because that's always a real hassle. Then the other reason is it could really tear out around the hole uh, if you just pop it through from this side. So I'm gonna get a mm -hmm. nice clean cut on both sides. Here we go. There it is. Look at that. Wow, it did fall right out. It didn't just it? fall right out. You know, you could spend the rest of your day trying to get that piece of wood out of your drill bit. I don't want to do that. We're trying to get some good shots for you so you can see the saw cutting here, but actually I couldn't see the line at all on that last cut while Eric was holding the camera in front of me, but you know what? I think it came out pretty good anyway. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, you really... Yeah. May have fire caught it or something crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, that's one way to do it. And with a little more work from the inside, we were able to finish disconnecting these vents. After we reinstall new vent terminations, we will retape and reseal these inside connections as well. My phone's ringing. Ha! It's the inspector. About time. Mr. What do you want? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I called you a few times. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't know what if, like, you maybe your phone was messed up or you were just really busy, you know? We are, I mean, we're absolutely hammers. Nobody here. Man, you're I'm the man. I've been covered up. I'm tore all up. You are the man. I must be. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm to be the man now. Well, i tell you what, you, um, you, see, you know, like, supply and demand, you know, like, when there's less of something to become more valuable? I'm gonna go tell Yes, I think I, I am I that's what I'm saying right now, okay? I'm going to, yeah. I'm it's Jamie Perkins told me to tell you that. more valuable. Yep. Oh, yes. After getting both of these vent Ooh. terminations removed, we were able to put our block in place and simply trace it. On the bottom edge we have to do a thing called eyeballing, where you eyeball the edge since it's not up against the material you're tracing against. Now, everybody knows that these saws vibrate super fast. And it's a super amazing tool. But did you know it could go this slow? Look how slow that is. That's funny. It's like shaking its head no. You want to cut this thing for me? No. All right, this is like surgery, okay? So, you know, there's a couple layers here. And I only want to cut through the siding layer. That's it. I don't want to cut all the way through because then I'd be inside the house. I just want to cut through the siding. So you got to feel when you go through the back of the siding and bump into the uh, plywood behind it. Okay. Not bad. Pretty good. Now, that wasn't the prettiest cut that I've made in my life, but it was a cut that I made in my life, so. Boom! Look at that, it actually fits pretty good. I'm happy with that. I think Ray can cock that up. Obviously, cutting a huge hole in your siding for this block to fit in is a great place for water to leak in, so we seal the back as well as the surface with a high-quality caulk to keep it from ever leaking. These are 16 gauge galvanized finish nails and I pretty much load this thing up because in essence I'm only nailing it to the sheathing layer of the house. Hey, uh, aren't the holes supposed to line up on the, uh, you know... Alright, you freaking backseat carpenter, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jamie's right, the hole didn't line up, but I'm using this opportunity to make this pipe come out the same height as this pipe, so it looks better. So I'm going to use this like a guide, shoop, sink that in there and carve that out and then they'll look better jamie appreciate that yeah that's what i like i mean i'm not gonna try to throw them under the bus but... Woo. there we go hmm. that'll snap your wrist if you're not careful by the way <laughs> Oh, 
Looks good. Pretty sweet. I gotta find a new job. I can't keep doing this.